Cody Detweiler, a.k.a. Whistlin' Diesel, a.k.a. the CEO of Destruction. Whistlin' Diesel has earned millions of followers and hundreds of millions of views by, let's just say, testing the durability of automobiles. What a time to be alive, right? Earlier this year, Cody published a video to YouTube titled, LASIK Surgery Ruined My Life. Needless to say, it was a major departure in subject and tone from his usual content. It racked up over a million views before being removed from YouTube. Now it's on Facebook where it currently has over two and a half million views. A colleague asked me if I thought Cody's take was fair game or fear mongering. So I'm gonna play the video and offer my thoughts. Let's check it out. Getting LASIK eye surgery was the worst decision I have ever made and if I could do it again, even if I could see perfectly fine, I wouldn't risk losing my eyesight for anything. So unfortunately, LASIK regret is not a unique feeling. It's a relatively safe procedure, but there are plenty of people that are unhappy with it. About a year ago, I was fed up with wearing contacts. I had the typical issues with contacts, just too much time putting them in and out. Sometimes dry eyes here and there. I had a negative four in one eye and a negative 4.5 in the other eye, which is pretty bad vision enough to where this is blurry holding your hand out in front of you. So this is about the average prescription for a laser vision correction procedure. Obviously, he can't do much without them, and he's getting tired of contact lenses like most people that wear contact lenses all the time. They get dryness, their eyes get red, so I can see why he's looking to get out of them. So I asked a bunch of friends and, and looked up information on the internet of experiences of people who have gotten LASIK before. It was mostly positive. People saying that they got it, it was quick, painless, took about 30 minutes, they went home, went to bed and woke up with perfectly fine vision the next morning. So I am kind of surprised that he looked on the internet and didn't find much negative stuff on LASIK. There's plenty of it out there. The following is a little bit graphic in description, but it is exactly what happened. They took a tool that keeps your eye open and they basically held my eyelid back forcefully with this tool. He's a bit sensational in the way he describes this step part of the eye procedure. Anytime you do laser vision correction, and obviously you don't want your patients blinking, you have to put something in the eyelids to hold it open. In my 16 years of experience, it's never been traumatic to a patient to have a speculum in their eyelids to hold it open. So after a couple of attempts, they successfully suction cup this piece on, and then they lower the machine down onto my eye and basically cut my eye open with a scalpel. So this machine goes in a circular motion and slices the front part of my cornea. They pull the machine off, they pull the mounting piece off, and then the doctor takes a scalpel, and since my eye is numb, I can't feel this, and flips over this flap. What he's really describing here is the first step of LASIK. LASIK is a full cutting procedure. As most of us know, it's easier to cut something hard than cut something soft. They put a suction device on your cornea and it raises the pressure of your eye and makes it easier to cut this flap. The flap is usually about 110 microns. The average corneal thickness is about 550 microns. So 20% of your cornea is cut, lifted on this hinge, and then the laser is done to reshape your cornea. It is quite invasive sometimes when they do cut the flap, and that's what he's describing here. If something goes wrong at this moment, I permanently lose vision. I will never see again. That again is a little sensational. No one's gonna promise you you're gonna go blind if that step goes wrong. Ophthalmology and surgery on the eye, there's a lot of things we can do, but again, it is very risky if something did go wrong. And this is why we don't do the flap cutting, this is why there's other ways of doing it, and this is why we're making this video. So they flip open this flap, and then they move me under another portion of the machine for the LASIK procedure. I sit under there, and they said stare directly at the laser. If you move your eye, the machine will stop, and then you can line back up. I stare at the laser, and at this moment, I realize that there's no going back, so I have to just commit and get my eye finished. They turn it on. Sounds like a stove trying to start over and over and over again, just constant shocking and zapping sounds. I could smell my eye burning under this laser, and after about 10 or 12 seconds, they turn it off, they move the machine away, and they flip the piece of my cornea back over, and then they take a small tool and press it in, to make sure that it's properly sealed. This is all unique to LASIK. LASIK does not equal all laser vision correction. These steps that he's describing in graphic detail, not all laser vision correction does this. I stopped doing the one 16 years ago that did this, 
You don't have to get this done if you want to get out of glasses and contact lenses. And the other thing that I'll say is, all of our patients take a Valium before they get this case done, before they get their procedure done. So he seems to be very, very, very aware of everything that's going on in this procedure. So I'm a little surprised, but this is not the routine laser vision correction experience at all. On the next eye, pull my eyelids apart. They tried to get the plastic mounting piece to suction onto my eye. According to the doctor, it was not fitting properly, but as I understand, there are only a couple sizes of these, if not just one size. The doctor tries to lock this piece onto my eye and it keeps popping off. So they try again and again and again. They clean the piece, they clean my eye more, they put some more drops on, and they try pressing this harder and harder every time to get this piece to lock on to my eyeball, to suction cup on. After five or six failed attempts, they push very hard on my eye. Very painful for Cody. But like we said, the five or six suction attempts, ASA uses no suction. You don't need to get this done to get out of glasses and contact lenses. You don't need to get this done. No one's pushing hard on your eye. No one's trying to wedge a suction cup on your eye and trying to do one size fits all. This is specific to LASIK, L-A-S-I-K. I am all done, just, just like that. Flawless, excellent procedure, I quote. And I walk out of there and I hope that within 24 hours I will hopefully have full vision back not knowing that that was the last time that I would ever properly see again without any complication. Very few ophthalmologists, if this is all true and he had to do five or six attempts at suction, is gonna tell a patient you had a flawless procedure. This was far from flawless, and again, I feel very bad for Cody, but it's obvious five or six attempts to do something that left him in pain and left him unsure of his visual outcome was not a flawless procedure. Next morning, 13 hours later, I woke up, took off the plastic mask, took off the blindfold, and then opened my eyes. And it was not 2020 vision. It was not clear vision. The vision was actually worse than what I started with. I could make out shapes. It was uh, quite distorted, almost double vision. And I had assumed that, that hopefully it would just get better as the day progressed. The horror story continues. It's obvious he's traumatized. It's quite an unusual experience, but it happens. I started to Google on my phone how long it takes to see again after LASIK eye surgery. And most examples I was seeing take one to two days. So by the time I hit three or four days, I started really worrying if I would get my full vision back. Cody had an elective procedure that he probably played, paid plenty of money for. Anytime a doctor operates on you, whether your insurance paid for it or whether you paid for it yourself, you know, you ought to have access to that doctor and you shouldn't need to rely on Google or AI for any information about your post-op period. This is not a typical experience with laser vision correction at all. And it's kind of shocking and surprising. And again, I feel very bad for Whistlin' Diesel. This is the only time in my life that I've ever had a genuine, real panic attack. I sat on the chair and they looked at my eyes under a machine, uh, like a, kind of a microscope type thing, to make sure that the corneal flap was placed properly over my eye. They looked it over and after about five minutes of inspection, he seemed to be able to point out something that the corneal flap wasn't quite properly back in place. Again, the flap not being placed properly highly unusual. But the important take home message of this is, you don't need to get the flap cut. This isn't the definitive approach to getting out of contact lenses and glasses at all, at all. And no one should ever compromise on safety. And if they know that there's other approaches to doing it besides cutting a flap, definitely do not get a flap cut. It got to the point where I could feel my whole eyeball being just pushed into my head, just my whole eyeball being pressed into the point where it was definitely no longer round in shape. And I started to get super sweaty. I almost passed out as they're jabbing my eye with this tool. As I'm hitting the fight or flight point where I'm ready to either jump out of the chair or pass out, they say, all right, I think we got it. Now this video is about 16 minutes and about probably at least three quarters of it are about talking about the problems with the suction or the flap being misplaced at the end of the procedure. 
you don't need to get that done. You don't need to get that done. No one needs to press on your eye and make your eye not a sphere anymore. You don't need to get that done. It's now been one year since my LASIK eye procedure and my eyesight is quite comparable to when I was using contacts, but with several drawbacks. I'm 100% reliant on sunglasses. I cannot go without sunglasses if it's a sunny day. And if I do, my eyes are in extreme pain. It'll give me a headache. I'm 100% reliant on eye drops. Every morning, I wake up 30 minutes early and I put in eye drops and I go back to bed until my eyes are wet enough to be able to open and close properly. And this is one of the normal complications of LASIK eye surgery that was in the waiver. But nobody talks about that. Dry eyes, definitely much worse when you cut a flap. Informed consent should have all these potential complications and side effects in them. So I'm kind of surprised that he didn't know about it. But again, you cut a flap, you're doing the most invasive way of getting out of glasses and contact lenses. And the most invasive ways like this can have long-term issues like they unfortunately did with Whistling Diesel. Any procedure could have complications, but something with a 30% complication rate on the most important part of your senses should not be legal. There's been several articles of people 20 years later bumping their eye and the flap comes back open because it never properly heals. And they lose that part of their cornea forever, resulting in them being blind in that eye. There's almost a full guarantee that you will not have perfect vision after this. Would you do it? I think the answer for most people would be no. But since there's overwhelming positive evidence, it leads me to wonder if this might be biased from articles written by LASIK eye surgery companies wanting more business. Cody chose the highest risk way of getting out of glasses and contact lenses. He, he really did. Patients should be fully informed when they make a decision, and he's right, the eyes are critical in someone's life. And for him to go through this and be light sensitive and have dry eyes, it's really terrible to see that. Like we said, if you have two options, okay, you have an elective surgery, you have instant recovery with a cutting procedure that permanently alters the structure of your eye, or you have one with a five-day functional recovery that doesn't permanently alter. If people knew that they had those choices to make, I don't know how many would say, permanently alter the structure, and I want this wow factor, and I'd rather have long-term issues than a five-day recovery. I don't think any of you would want that. Very unfortunate what happened to him. I think we can all learn from this, that there are other ways much, much safer of getting out of glasses and contact lenses. If you have questions about laser eye surgery, send them to me using the contact form on my website.